The internet is a honeypot of information. I know, no one uses it to conduct intellectual research like I do, but even pointless YouTube browsing relies on your curiosity about mundane crap. Clickbait wouldn't work if you didn't care whether the piano worth $250,000 sounded better than the one worth four. Nearly none of it is useful, and a lot of it is like squirting acid on your psyche. Due to my lack of authority, it's likely that my words will get stuck in your earwax and you'll go on clicking videos about fart physics, but remember Genesis. Don't be like Adam and let your curiosity make you ashamed of having a wiener, figuratively and sometimes literally. With everything at your fingertips, you're liable to develop Neil deGrasse Tyson syndrome and start thinking fun facts make wisdom. It's no surprise that nations with easy internet access tend to be more secular. If you toke on the Elon Musk blunt for long enough, you might start confusing facile crap like simulation theory for legitimate metaphysics. The idea of moving past a need for God is just cheap pride. Where adults believe knowing what an Alpha Centauri is means they know better than Abraham when it comes to morals. If you morons were in the Garden of Eden, not only only would you eat the apple, but you'd end up chewing the leaves from the tree of knowledge if the serpent showed you a video of James Corden doing it. It's no surprise there's a recognizably internet-bound gay cult of atheism. Satan's point in getting Adam and Eve to eat from the tree was that the knowledge would make man consider himself like God. Hey champ, you're in the back seat. We really did it this time, champ. The infinity of accessible information sounds too good to be true because it is. It's especially ensnaring when it comes to entertainment because the internet can guide you from Vine compilations to movie clips, and then it's a music mashup seamlessly. And while you gobble every morsel of enjoyment the conveyor belt of the algorithms churn out, your mind is trained to immediate gratification. This serves an objective that is currently shared by many establishment forces, destroying male introverts. Whereas in the past they'd involve themselves in constructive ventures, today they're caught up in worthless pastimes and effeminately attached to the pleasure they get from it. And that's how we turn creative potential into Reddit browsing, porn watching, Nintendo Switch playing bubbleheads that somehow get called men in our warped world. The toxic waste in the water supply probably helps, but the internet's facilitation of irresponsible responsibility is largely the culprit for the herd of man babies crawling on all fours across the world. The immediacy that makes the internet so appealing leads to inadvertent exposure to the anomalous without preparation. When you activate autoplay on YouTube or go on the Instagram Explore page, you are unknowingly strapping yourself to Alex's chair from a clockwork orange. Except, instead of aversion therapy, you are subliminally lulled into enjoying not being in control of what you see, making your interests increasingly divergent from what they should be. As shotguns loaded with shredded encyclopedias and prison sewage blast away at your brain, it's no wonder you're left confused in a mixed bag of wheat and chaff. There's no established guide in this chaotic environment, hence why confused postmodernist worldviews go so well with it. This wouldn't be such a problem if the fear people had of ISPs selling access to sites and packages became a reality. Not only would it let the client know what they're in for, it would also lower prices across the board. But since internet users are swine that trample every pearl they get, I shouldn't expect it to happen any soon. If the categories make it hard to discriminate truth from falsehood, the categories suck and we should get rid of them. The only reason fake news is a thing is because some retards actually expect the internet to be reliable. Speaking of falsehood, I've already established the political sphere as the devil's favorite hoe to sow division with. The internet has an aggressively expansive demeanor when it comes to political discussions, and of course, people have tried to rope me into its quicksands. When I was banned, Trump said I blew my chance at red-pilling the masses, and that I should have shrouded my views to stay on the platform, as if Susan hadn't swung that window shut after the Luger thing. Considering the great reach I had before the paywall brought with it predatory journalists and a gaggle of watchers with USS Liberty in their username, I don't miss it. Avoiding that hassle altogether is preferable to having to dog whistle. And for what? 
Building a viewer base of pinheads who are too apathetic to pay the price of a cup of coffee to watch something they like? Some of which agree with Mark Zuckerberg and Elizabeth Warren and think social media ought to be a public utility. As if eating the horse apples of an evil tree wasn't bad enough, they want to petrify it into an inverse Yggdrasil. You have to be gullible to think the left-wing bias of Silicon Valley would be combated by the government. The only surviving companies post-regulation would be the ones entrenched with it. Big tech would be even less accountable to its users and even more to politicians. And it makes sense for technological elites to clamor for government involvement. They're no different than children crying for their parents. But the internet is no son of a single parent, as it's more akin to the disease secretion from the devilish gay sex the federal government had with Lucifer. Why is that? Well, in the last couple of videos, sins of the flesh were the focus, but the world was only briefly mentioned. The world as an understandable enemy, not as the planet or the people on it, is prone to hosting and facilitating misbehavior. Now imagine the world and its vicious nature of parading dysfunction on steroids, and you'll get the YouTube trending page. Worldly attachments such as sensualism, materialism, and egotism are the order of the day every day in cyberspace. Think of what the internet has been primarily known for since its birth. Think of Instagram and what it's used for. Think of how it makes people behave to get traction. Think of the aesthetics that drape this Grendel we call the internet and you'll see it for what it is infertile. The sleek designs on the logos of nearly every tech company reflect the sterility of their products. Barren of texture, without color, sterile, artificial, dead. The internet is just a technologically enhanced version of the world, so it couldn't be any other way. It was one happy accident that CERN 